Hey guys, welcome back to DMAT Customs YouTube channel. Getting on to the handbrake today. So I've already done most of it, some of it, parts of it, which I didn't film. So I'll catch us up. Let's have a look see. If you're familiar with the, uh, sorry, if you're familiar with the 51, 50s sheds, uh, normally they have a, a this thing here, a pull, a pull handle under the dash that um, goes through the firewall and has this big long rod that runs down next to the old inline six that used to live in the, uh, the old boiler room. For obvious reasons, I can't use that because there's now another uh, engine in the way. So. I've been looking into different ways to um, set up a handbrake system, whether I modify this or do some other under dash thing. And yeah, so I've ended up doing a, I'm going to do like a console mounted. That was it just falling over. Um, gave me a little bit of a fright. <laughs> it's not bolted in. Um, in between the bucket seats. Now I'm using, if you haven't already noticed or haven't already heard this on previous videos, using 65 Thunderbird bucket seats in the front of the old Area 51 Fleetline project. This thing. And so, yeah, I we did a bit of scavenging around the other day looking for handbrake cables because the rear end in this is a Borgwarner 78. Oh, it's confusing actually. It's actually a Borg Warner 75 axle housing, diff housing, whatever you want to call it. But it's going to have Borg Warner 78 internals and a disc brake calipers and stuff like that. And they take a little pull type cable. Now, I thought about using the one piece cable for the rears, like I've got on the old bomb truck, but couldn't find one when I was scavenging around. So I came home with from my little hillbilly foraging expedition up at Pick Apart. Came home with a two-piece kind of rear cable sort of set up and then the I got the front cable out of the same car as well and then I scavenged a little um, pull handle out of some other little Japanese thing. I don't even know what it was, but it was a rear-wheel drive convertible, so I don't know what it was, but very simple. And so, yeah, last weekend I set about figuring out how to make it all work and I've got part of the way there and I've kind of got parts of it mounted and parts of it figured out um, on the underside and the front cable part sort of coming up through the floor and I've just now got to make a I'll show you hang on I'll come around the other side so here we go again so this is the front cable that I was just talking about coming up through the floor so this will be hidden by carpet and stuff and then sound deadening will build up around here a bit anyway I'm probably going to build some kind of console which will sit over the top of this. Also, this is my rickety little pull handle style which is very basic and very simple but once we do all the interior of this it might get a bit of um, a bit of treatment and a boot and maybe some kind of covering to make it look a bit tie in with the rest of the interior and stuff like that. But at this point that's it. So what I've got left to do is make some kind of bracketry that this can bolt onto on the floor here. I'm thinking for strength that I may make a plate that I will then plug weld through the top but the plate will come up from the underside and I'll plug weld it just so it's got an extra bit of pull strength. Um, that's this. Even though this is quite thick steel, this is 1.2 mil on the trans tunnel, it should be fine but just to again to keep our low volume certification system happy I'll put a little bit of extra load spreading material underneath to give it a bit more sort of oomph if you get what I'm saying and from the underside hopefully it's not too dark under here but from the underside we have the two two cables which are gonna you know hook onto the old drum brake that goes inside the the rotor hat and then I'm gonna need to make some 
something to hook this end of the cable into that's going to land up around around here some maybe around there somewhere i think maybe that then i can you know plug this end of the cable into it'll go to the splitter and should in theory have a functioning handbrake or park brake or you know those so i guess the next step is maybe make up these little pieces to hold this end of the cable since this is going to be pretty much going to be what it is yeah and then we'll make up the little plate thing to hold do the pull handle reckon cool okay let's figure this out hokey dokey so simple way of making little collars for the handbrake cable sort of stopper point whatever you want to call it is um so i did it last time was just with a bit of pipe tube with the same inside diameter as the outside diameter of that collar thing so fortunately i still got a piece that kind of fit so just gonna cut me a couple of pieces of that then i'll cut slots down them and then i have to make up some kind of little tabs that i can then mount onto the area 51 Hmm. So, I'm going to set about cutting some of those. They need to be about 30 millimeters each, which is just over an inch for Imperial speakers. That gives me a little, oh, little bit of extra wiggle room. Got a plan, I think, for my little doohickeys to go up under the floor to attach the rear part of the cable thing to. So these are my little, I don't know, little eyelet things that I'm making. So I'm just going to weld these on to these little plates. And these little plates will be um, plug welded onto the underside of the floor. You get where I'm going, hopefully. Wondering whether they need to be plug welded or sort of welded all the way around. Dunno. Now I'm questioning whether they're actually thick enough. Whether I should use 3mm rather than this 2mm stuff. Hmm. Okay, so started second guessing my choice of thickness for this handbrake thing. So remade them in 3mm or 8th rather than 2mm which is I don't know half of that, third of that, two thirds of that punch some holes, drill them, weld my pieces on it's raining so traffic gets noisier uh, so I'll drill, drill, drill some holes in these and um, yeah, I'm going to put a little kink in them as well, a little kick up, uh, once I figure out where that's got to go, just to bring them off the floor uh, just a shade and clear the cable a little bit more. So, I'll get onto that. That's my new bits. My new, um... What do you call it? Underfloor parts of the thing more drilled and ready to rock and roll, but probably about 4,000 degrees at the moment after just burning holes through holes through them with a blunt drill bit. Right, take them off. Let them cool down just a little. Even with gloves, I always manage to find the hole in my gloves when I've got hot stuff to deal with. So. I gotta figure out where to put my little bend in them as well. Wondering whether I do that before I weld the 
either collars on or do I weld the collar on and then struggle to get them in place in the press to put the bend in. Mm. Maybe I should use one of those other ones, skinny ones, the thinner ones, as a template for that little bend. That could be a good idea. Hmm, do that. Okay, so I made my little template, well, did my little bend out of this template, so I'm going to do the bends on these parts before I weld the eyes onto them, just to guarantee that I can get them into the little press and bend them to that angle. So let's do that. Try to do that, try to get them as the same as, as possible. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, got my little beans in there, got them as opposites, so that's good. Now, I'm just going to weld my little eye things on there, and then I can prep these up for welding them on under the floor, and prep up under the floor, and stuff like that, get it ready to go. Okay, so that's my little two little brackets welded up. Um, just gotta wait for them to cool off a little bit. I might spray some weld through primer onto the back of them and prep up underneath wire wheel maybe. Spray some of that on there as well. Be the way to go. Alrighty, so I've uh, just been underneath the uh, old Area 51 once again, prepping up for this stuff. Copper weld through primer. So we'll get back under there now and squirt some of this over the beer steel that I'm going to be plug welding these little brackets to. You want to come? Okay. <coughs> Too far away. Yeah, I'll clean that back to sort of moderately clean beer steel. I'll just. Put some of that on there, and oh, I'll squirt some on the back of these. Okay, so while those are drying, uh, I might start working out my bracket for the actual handbrake lever. I might might pay to get that in place properly before I weld those little suckers in there last thing because I want to make sure that there's going to be enough adjustment and stuff like that so we'll get into that okay oh still still on back on this end of the old oh, do not jump around here too much but um the old handbrake assembly so what I'm thinking is, I'll cut this down, but welding a plate, um, well, cutting a plate and welding some uh, tabs that'll come up through the floor, and this will be welded on the on the underside of the floor from the top with, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plug welds or something down, down here. Whether I cut a slot or two small slots for the tabs to come up through I'm not sure yet but initially 
that's my plan. And the logic behind that is, is like if you're yanking on this thing over and over again, you might get some kind of flex in this trans tunnel, just in the sheet metal, and it's it's 1.2 mil or one mil, so it's not super thick. I'm thinking, like if I have that slightly longer to the front, it will it will sort of distribute the pull, especially off that top one, and spread that that pull load kind of up the trans tunnel rather than if I just welded tabs on here it would be directly on on the thinner steel. You get where I'm going with that? I'm sort of wondering how wide to go, whether that's going to be wide enough or should I go a tad wider. Don't think it's really gonna matter that much to be fair. Hmm. And then if I weld tabs on here, I'm going to have a bit of weld up and down the sides of the mano, which is going to interfere with how flush that's going to fit to there. So, what I could do is cut slots, tab, sink, countersink tabs and weld them from the back. Am I just overthinking this? Or could I cut the tabs and fold them up. Nah. Hmm. Wouldn't mind going a little bit wider than this. I'll see what I've got in the way of material and then figure it out from there. Whereas this bit here is wider, but it's too short for what I'm going to do. Or is it? Hmm. Let's have a look. Right, this is my pieces cut, so this is my underfloor plate, and then this is going to be my tabs that will come up through the floor. Um, I'm going to drip, or I've already drilled them, I'm going to tap those. These are the original bolts that were holding that little handbrake lever on into whatever that donor car was, so I'm going to tap these to that, and then I've got to put a slot ever so slight curve, there's already a little bit of a curve in there, this piece of scrap was slightly bent so that's kind of quite handy. Going to put an ever so slight curve through the centre of this just so it can get up square onto the slight curve of that trans tunnel. Make sense? Cool. Right. Uh, might do the curve thing. Hmm, I'll do that. To do my slight curve, I've already been in and I've used this little curvy tool thing here to kind of get me roughly in the ballpark. I'm going to attempt to use my handy dandy press yet again and this and that just to give it a slight squeeze. Not much. Not bad, I might go and have a look in the car. Here she goes, found it. Okie dokie, right. Um, yeah. I've got my curve, I don't know whether I've told you that, but I did, and I've tapped my little tabs that I'm now going to weld onto there. I'm just wondering whether, for a bit of extra, I might drill drill through these and actually do a, a plug from the back side as well. Well, does that, that, nah, nah, I'll just weld them, I'll be alright, Jesus, I'm on. Over engineering, overthinking. Yeah, so I just got to get these. So my center line of my whole handbrake assembly is in the center. Put me about two and a half millimeters to the other side of my center line. It's going to be really tricky. Maybe I need to roll a new line with a fat sharpie pen. Yep, cool. What I'm getting at is, is 
is this center line here not the one with the scribble on it the one that's actually in the center but the one with the scribble on it is probably about where that edge needs to get welded there you see really need to should have ground this up too before I did that but uh, well there we are I'll do that and then I'll do some lines okay right that line that's where my tabs need to go but because my plate's got a slight curve on it that way my tabs kind of look like they're laying over which they are but I what I might do is just put a wee tack on there and then just give them a wee nudgy nudge lean them over a little bit with the persuader now we're leaning the other way but that's okay because I don't know why, but it feels okay to me. It's probably still really, uh, yes, probably is very hot still. Um, tabs welded on, yes, still very hot. So I'm, I might let that cool down before I get impatient and try to mess with it. Make sure it still fits and then we'll go and figure out where it's going to go in the Area 51 project. Okay, so battery went flat. As you see, already got some weld through edge primer on that little sucker. And this is my pattern here for what I've got to cut out. Uh, here, I'm sorry, pointing in the wrong place just for a change. Um, so these will be, these round circles will be me plug welds. And these little squares I'll cut out for these tabs to come through. And I may even run a weld around the outside of them as well. Maybe? I don't know. Do you think that's overkill? probably uh, but it wouldn't hurt so unless of course cert man says that's no good you're gonna have to take that out and then I'll say come on mate there's like 15 hours of welding in there and he'll say don't matter mate let's do it sometimes they do that most of the time they don't but yeah so rounded edges as well just for tear factor and stuff like that and yeah, so I'll drill those, cut those out. And then we'll look at welding this sucker in, I reckon. Mm hmm. Right, drill, grinder, and drill. Right, okay, let's do it. So there's all my plug welds, plug welded, and I put a little bit of weld around the base of the old tabs, you know. Yeah, you got into a bit of a fight with that, so that's not the prettiest stuff. It'll be okay, put a seam sealer around that as well when we get that far. Fill up any little pinholes in there, and we'll seam seal it all from the underneath as well. So, right, might clean up some of this and squirt a bit of black etch on there. Should I? Yeah, I will and then we'll fit it up and see where we've got to weld on those bits down there okay so got the um couple of well, a couple of plugs in this one and just one holding this at the moment but that's where they're gonna go see and they'll go to that splitter and they'll probably rattle on the floor forever more. Uh, 
but hopefully not so much. May even put like a glue or rubber pad or something in there or something kind of a slider to help with that. I may even cut this down a little shorter, a little um, cut it down and redrill the holes for the things to go into. So just because I want to and give me a little bit more clearance for the old drive shaft. This is approximately at ride height, so there's clearance there, but when it comes to the old, um, uh, when the thing's aired out, that might be a different story. So we may, <laughs> may have to revisit this at some point. But yeah, I'll finish welding these up for now anyway, and we have to cut them off, we have to cut them off. It's only metal. My favourite is thing trying to weld upside down. I, I suck at it. So that's them all plugged in there. Um, I had a copper weld through primer. It certainly seems to help. Plus I've whacked up the wire speed a little bit to stop it dropping back down and landing on me quite Yeah, on the whole, those little plug welds went kind of quite well. As long as they penetrated up the other side, which I'll go and have a look now to make sure. So let's see. Yeah, that penetration looks like it penetrated through to this side a little bit so hopefully that's enough to hold those brackets on there if not I could actually drill a couple of plugs from this side and weld them from the top as well just to I don't know amplify that a little bit hey guys welcome back next day so can't remember where I left off yesterday what I yabbered on about but Pretty much handbrake is in, done, and seems to work. Anyway, a couple of little things left to do. Got to make up um, some little clip things. I'll show you. Okay, so what we've got left to do here is something to do with this. I was thinking it might make up a, a little holder thing that I can then attach to the chassis rail that this can sort of sit in and, and the cable can slide in as the suspension travels up and down and later on we'll probably put like a, a p-clip of some sort um, just to hold the cable up to the floor and then that's it pretty much done I reckon where's my helmet? I'll leave that under there not surprising but yeah so um, yeah, let's have a look at making up some little brackets to hold the cable. Okay, point the camera in the right direction. Okay, so I've got a bit of a plan, I think. I'm just going to cut a couple of bits of, um, I think it's 25mm, 3mm angle, to make a couple of little brackets that I'll um, weld a little piece like this onto, drill some holes, and drill and tap into the chassis rail to um, just hold that cable back into that slider. Um, may not need a P-clip up under the floor, we might kind of play that one by ear and see what happens with the, um, who do you mean what's it with the ride height and the suspension travel and see what it does to the to the cable. Once I've got it kind of clipped up in here, I can jack it up and move it around and stuff and see what happens. But yeah, so I'll cut some of these, shape them up, take them there. Okie dokie, right, got all my pieces cut now, 
Yeah, my little bits to make my little cable hangery do that. Now I've just got to work out my angles for the fan dangle. Essentially it's going to be sort of like that. See? But it's going to end up on a slight angle like that. So now i just got to figure that out. I should really prep these up for welding before I mark them, actually. Good idea. Hmm. Safety first. Okay, now we're ready to go and put some marks on these things. Let's go. Do I need both of them? If I do one and then make the other one the same, that should be alright. Hey, okay, yep. So that clips in there, if it'll go on again. Oh, she's a bit tight, that one. I've got to stretch that a little bit. Hang on. Back again. Hopefully that's not too loose now, but I could always squeeze it back up. Ah, look at that. Perfect. Now, I don't want to tack this in place. Um, tack it on with this plastic sleeve in there because I'll wreck the sleeve. Guaranteed. So what I've got to try and figure out is where I want it to sit and on what angle. We're a little bit lower than what the ride height will be at the moment. Could rectify that with a little bit of package. And that's approximately the ride height. So I want this to sit about about there. So if I Mark my angle like that and make two of those, yeah? Sweet. It's water. Thanks for your help. Okay, probably had the camera pointing it the wrong direction for all of that, but doesn't really matter. Um, just kind of cleaned up the welds on these. They don't need to be super strong. They just are holding a cable, but I'll do a bit of a strength test on it anyway. Hopefully not embarrass myself by breaking these off. <coughs> and then having to weld them all back on again. I would just break them just like that, but so it's just had to put a couple of newton meters on there, not all of them. But yeah, now 
I'll wait for them to cool off properly this time. And then we can figure out where they're gonna go, drill some holes, tape them. Alrighty, so that's my little clips done. I've got one more little job I want to do on this handbrake setup and that will declare it mocked up, which basically means I, to do this little job, I've got to kind of pull it all back out again to kind of modify that um, splitter on that front cable and maybe the tube thing that's on there as well. So I want to trim down this to make it a little bit narrower, the splitter. I um, want to extend this slightly and tidy this up, get rid of the clunky chunkiness of this contraption that I have contracted. Okay. Three little jobs later, huge mess, some of it's my mess from earlier, but modified this little cable thing, shortened that, extended that, shortened that, shortened that thing. So. I just got to put it all back in. Well, guys, handbrake, and that's all back in now. Uh, I was expecting it to go a little bit easier than it did. Now it did fight me a little bit going back in, but we got there in the end. Um, but yeah, it works. It does everything it's supposed to do. I'm not 100% happy with with this adjuster part. I might redesign that and come up with something better because at the moment it just it works but it's just a bit you know like a bit uh, a bit a bit rough a bit rough and ready but i don't know cobbled together it, yeah, it's just not really it's not really doing it for me so i'm going to revisit that at some point not today because I, I need to think about it i think it's part of the way there but yeah nah Anyway, so that's in. It works. See, so yeah, underneath, where are they? Underneath, we've got those little, all these done. Got my little holdery things done. Like I say, I might put some, uh, like just a P clip or something up here uh, later on, because we may have mufflers sitting here at some point. So I don't want them, um, you know, this coming down and sitting on touching a muffler so extended that that piece up in there I don't know if you can see it just so it clears the drive shaft loop so the cable's not running directly on it that tube that it runs in is finishes just above there so the cable doesn't doesn't run on there at the moment it's all sitting all kind of wonky but we'll rectify that when we put it all in proper hopefully for the last time when we get that far um, yeah, so that's about it really. I'll get out from under here. Alright, so I've uh, got to leave it at that one for this one, this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, cool if you did. Area 51 now has an e brake of sorts. Um, it was forecast to be 98% effective at the start of this project. At the moment, it's probably sitting at about 50 50 but seems to be all right in the uh, scientific world so must be all right in the car building e-brake world maybe no nah, i guess not but yeah anyway i don't know what's next still got to figure out where i'm going to mount up my ecu and my fuse panel stuff like that so that may be next up on the cards for the old area 51 project so yeah, leave it there. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, do so if you want to see some more on this. Maybe some on that. I haven't really done anything on the truck for ages, but uh, anyway. Till next time, take it easy. Peace.